Welcome to vSkills, YouTube channel. In this video, you will learn about the top interview questions for, technical analyst. So, let's get started. Question number 1, when should a trader use the bottom-up approach? The answer is. The bottom-up approach focuses on individual stocks as opposed to a macroeconomic view. It involves analyzing a stock that appears fundamentally interesting for potential entry and exit points. For example, an investor may find an undervalued stock in a downtrend and use technical analysis to identify a specific entry point when the stock could be bottoming out. They seek value in their decisions and intend to hold a long-term view on their trades. Question number 2. What is your strategy to handle risk factors while trading? The answer is. Some key considerations include. Firstly, understanding the rationale and underlying logic behind the technical analysis. Then, Backtesting trading strategies to see how they would have performed in the past. Next, practicing trading in a demo account before committing real capital. Being aware of the limitations of technical analysis to avoid costly failures and surprises. Being thoughtful and flexible about scalability and future requirements. Next, trying to evaluate the features of a trading account by requesting a free trial. Lastly, starting small in the beginning and expanding as you gain experience. Question number 3. What is the difference between trend lines and channels? The answer is. Traders often use a trend line connecting highs for a period as well as another to connect lows in order to create channels. Also, more than one trend line can be applied to a chart. On the other hand, a channel adds a visual representation of both support and resistance for the time period being analyzed. Similar to a single trend line, traders are looking for a spike or a breakout to take the price action out of the channel. They may use that breach as an exit point or an entry point depending on how they are setting up their trade. Question number 4. What do you understand about the beta of an asset? The answer is. The beta of an asset is a method for measuring the systematic risk of an asset. It displayed how the price of a security responds to changes in market price. Moreover, it specifies the extent of movement of the returns of the stock with respect to the movement of market returns. However, assets that are riskier than average will have betas that exceed 1, and assets that are safer than average will have betas lower than 1 that is 0. Question number 5, what are some of the limitations of a trend line? The answer is. Some of the limitations of trend lines include. Firstly, trend lines have to be readjusted as more price data comes in. Secondly, a trend line will sometimes last for a long time, but eventually, the price action will deviate enough that it needs to be updated. Moreover, traders often choose different data points to connect. Lastly, trend lines applied on smaller timeframes can be volume sensitive. Question number 6, what are some of the key pointers of risk adjusted return? The answer is, some of the key pointers of risk adjusted return are, firstly, a risk adjusted return measures an investment's return after considering the degree of risk that was taken to achieve it. Secondly, there are various methods of risk adjusting performance such as the Sharpe Ratio and Trainer Ratio, with each yielding a slightly different result. Lastly, the purpose of risk-adjusted return is to assist investors to determine whether the risk taken was worth the expected reward. Question number 7, what do candlesticks reflect? The answer is, candlesticks reflect the impact of investor sentiment on security prices and are used by technical analysts to determine when to enter and exit trades. Question number 8, what is a breakaway gap? The answer is. A breakaway gap is used in the technical analysis used to identify a strong price movement through support or resistance. A gap is a difference between the open price and prior close price, where no trading activity takes place. The price breaks away from the support or resistance through a gap, as opposed to an intraday breakout. Also, breakaway gaps are often seen early in a trend when the price moves out of a trading range or following a trend reversal. Question number 9. What is dead cat bounce? The answer is. Dead cat bounce refers to the situation when the chart displays a prevailing trend downwards followed by a small rally, but the direction turns downward again. The second sell-off is then assisted and resumes the original downtrend. Question number 10. Explain the mechanism of tree shakes in terms of the share price. The answer is. When a market maker is trying to fill a large institutional buy order, sometimes they may not have enough shares. For fixing this, they start to gradually drop the share price in order to give the illusion that the company has a problem. Weak shareholders will sell up, and the market maker continues to drop the price until enough weak holders give up their shares. The market maker then fulfills its large order and returns 
the share price to where it started. Question number 11. Explain the term falling knife. The answer is. This states that normally for reasons such as a profit warning, or a change in market conditions, the future outlook of the company is less profitable than originally expected. Hence when a novice investor sees a rapidly falling share price, he or she may see it as an opportunity to buy cheap whereas, in reality, the share price may fall further. Traders should therefore avoid catching a falling knife. Question number 12, how would you define a trend line? The answer is. This refers to a straight line for the price movement of a security. It is a momentum indicator that calculates the rate of increase in the share price over time and alerts traders to any acceleration or deceleration of the trend. This also provides a direction of the securities movement. Further, trend lines are a simple and widely used technical analysis approach to judging entry and exit investment timing. And, this can connect two or more price points and then expands into the future to act as a line of support or resistance. Question number 13. Explain the types of trend lines. The answer is. There are three types of trends lines. First, uptrend line. This is formed by connecting two or more low points and has a positive slope and. Uptrend lines act as support and indicate that net demand is increasing even as the price rises. Second, downtrend line. This has a negative slope and is formed by connecting two or more high points. Downtrend lines act as resistance and indicate that net supply, supply less demand, is increasing even as the price declines. Third, sideways trend. This is a horizontal price movement of a stock between resistance and support levels that takes place when the forces of supply and demand are balanced. Question number 14. Explain the Dow theory. The answer is. Dow theory was developed by Charles Dow in the late 19th century based on his analysis of market price action. The assumptions stated by Rhea for the successful application of Dow theory are. Firstly, the Dow theory states that manipulation of the primary trend is not possible. Only individual shares could be manipulated as stated by Hamilton. Secondly, the market reflects all available information. Thirdly, Dow theory should be looked upon as a set of guidelines and principles for assisting investors and traders with their own study of the market. Question number 15. What is the significance of volume? The answer is. Volume is used for confirming trends and chart patterns. A price movement whether up or down with comparatively higher volume is considered much stronger than a similar move with weak volume. Therefore, in order to explore for large price movement, the volume should also be validated so as to see whether it tells the same story. Question number 16. What do you understand about price volume trends? The answer is. Price volume trend merges the percentage change in price and volume in order to confirm the strength of price trends or through divergences notification of weak price moves. In contrast to other price volume indicators, the price volume trend takes into account the percentage increase or decrease in the price instead of simply adding or subtracting volume depending on whether the current price is higher than the previous day's price. The private is calculated by multiplying the day's volume by the percent that the securities price changed and adding this value to a cumulative total. Question number 17. Define upside and downside Tasuki gap. The answer is. Upside Tasuki gap refers to a continuation pattern with a long white body followed by another white body that is gapped above the first one. The third day is black and opens inside the body of the second day, then closes in the gap between the first two days, but does not close the gap. Downside Tasuki gap refers to a continuation pattern with a long, black body followed by another black body that is gapped below the first one. The third day is wide and opens inside the body of the second day, then closes in the gap between the first two days but does not close the gap. Question number 18. What is the average directional index? The answer is. This refers to an indicator that helps traders in determining when the market is trending, how strong or weak a trend is, and when a trend may be about to start or reverse. Question number 19. What do you know about the Fibonacci numbers? The answer is. They are a sequence of numbers in which each successive number is the sum of the two previous numbers, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, 55, 89, 144, 610, etc. However, this sequence of numbers has an interesting number of interrelationships, such as the fact that any given number is approximately 1.618 times the preceding number and any given number is approximately 0.618 times the following number. The Fibonacci sequence also plays a very vital role in the technical analysis of stocks. 
Question number 20. What are Fibonacci arcs? The answer is. Fibonacci arcs are shown by first drawing a trend line between two extreme points, for example, a trough and an opposing peak. Three arcs are then drawn, centered on the second extreme point, so they intersect the trend line at the Fibonacci levels of 38.2%, 50.0%, and 61.8%. Question number 21. What do you know about Fibonacci fan lines? The answer is. Fibonacci fan lines are shown by drawing a trend line between two extreme points, for example, a trough and an opposing peak. Then an invisible vertical line is drawn through the second extreme point. Three trend lines are then drawn from the first extreme point so they pass through invisible vertical line at the Fibonacci levels of 38.2%, 50.0%, and 61.8%. Question number 22. What are Fibonacci time zones? The answer is. This can be considered as a series of vertical lines. They are spaced at the Fibonacci intervals of 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, 34, etc. The interpretation of Fibonacci time zones involves looking for significant changes in price near the vertical lines. Question number 23. What does an engulfing pattern suggest? The answer is. An engulfing pattern indicates a potential trend reversal. In which case the first candlestick has a small body that is completely engulfed by the second candlestick. It is referred to as a bullish engulfing pattern when it appears at the end of a downtrend, and a bearish engulfing pattern at the conclusion of an uptrend. Question number 24. Explain the theory of an efficient market. The answer is. An efficient market is a place where the market price of the security is an unbiased estimate of its native value. However, the efficient market hypothesis is based on assumptions like. Firstly, the market is free without any trade restrictions. Secondly, the market takes in all the information quickly and efficiently. Thirdly, the information is freely available to all at the same time. Next, the information is correct. Lastly, market players can analyze the information fast and occupies the market via buying and selling signals. Question number 25. Define fundamental analysis and technical analysis. The answer is, fundamental analysis examines securities by attempting to measure their intrinsic value. This covers three types of analysis. Economy analysis, industry analysis and company analysis. Whereas, technical analysis varies from fundamental analysis in which the traders look for statistical trends in the stock's price and volume. Moreover, it helps in forecasting the future price of shares on basis of historical movements of the price. Question number 26. Name the type of risks in the stock market? The answer is, there are two types of risk. First, systematic risks. This includes interest rate risk, market risk, purchasing power risk. Second, unsystematic risks. This includes liquidity risk, business risk, financial risk, default risk. Question number 27. What does efficient market hypothesis states? The answer is. The efficient market hypothesis states that financial markets are informationally efficient. Prices on traded assets already reflect all known information and therefore are unbiased in the sense that they reflect the collective beliefs of all investors about future prospects. Question number 28. Define Elliott Wave Theory. The answer is. The term Elliott Wave Theory can be considered as a theory in the technical analysis used for explaining the price movements in the financial market. The theory was developed by Ralph Nelson Elliott after he observed and identified recurring, fractal wave patterns. This theory looks for recurrent long-term price patterns related to persistent changes in investor sentiment and psychology. Moreover, this detects the impulse waves that set up a pattern and corrective waves that oppose the larger trend. Question number 29. Which technique will you use to signal the continuation of the current trend? The answer is. It is suggested to use an upside Tasuki gap to signal the continuation of the current trend. It is a three-bar candlestick formation such that. The first bar is a large white or green candlestick within a defined uptrend. The second bar is another white or green candlestick with an opening price that is gapped above the close of the previous bar. The third bar is a black or red candlestick that partially closes the gap between the first two bars. Question number 30. What is a stick sandwich? The answer is. A stick sandwich is a technical trading pattern with three candlesticks that appears to resemble a sandwich on a trader's screen. Stick sandwiches will have the middle candlestick oppositely colored of the candlesticks on either side of it, both of which will have a larger trading range than the middle candlestick. 
stick sandwich patterns can occur in both bearish and bullish indications. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.